Schoolwork is done by a friend. Huo, on the other hand, has time for training. His father was the second number in town for martial arts. Huo's father was challenged by a fighter who also had martial arts experience. Because he knows his father will win, Huo is confident and thrilled about the fight. His father was playing brilliantly at the start of the game since he knew he would win. Fighter stops his attack just as he was ready to defeat his opponent. I'm not sure what he was thinking when he said that this attack might kill the opponent. The opponent fighter seizes the opportunity and attacks him. Without following the rules, he defeats Huo's father. Because of this occurrence, Huo became despondent. Then the man's son appears and challenges Huo. My father conquered you, he adds, and now I'm going to defeat you. Huo accepts his challenge, and the two engage in a fight. Huo loses and believes he can keep his family's respect. He and a friend go to a library and steal a book from there. It was a training book, and he began training hard at all hours of the day and night. He challenges the boy to a fight after being trained. He was self-assured in this situation, and he showed it. He fights the boy and defeats him. The scene is presented in the movie after seven years. Huo has matured, and his father has passed away. His wife died as well, but he has a daughter whom he adores. She is pleased with his achievements. Huo has improved his fighting skills to the point where no one can defeat him. While fighting with him, all of his opponents were defeated. He has a large number of fans and followers, but he is now proud of them. He has abandoned his father's values. He attends numerous parties despite the fact that he has had so much alcohol that his daughter continues to wait for him. He is also in debt and does not devote enough attention to his family. He is unconcerned about the rest of the world, and he was dining at his best friend's restaurant because he has gotten wealthy. He owns and operates his own restaurant. He consumes a lot of alcohol and feeds and drinks his followers. The assistant of Huo's best buddy informs him that he is in debt. He must also return your funds. His best friend explains to him that you don't just have fans and following because you feed them. You should adjust your lifestyle, but it will have no impact on Huo. The next day, he encounters his adversary, King, who is likewise a skilled fighter who grows agitated while speaking. Huo grows hostile towards King's associates. The followers of Huo are depicted transporting a man on a stretcher late at night. They inform him that King has beaten him, and Huo is enraged. He arrives at the restaurant where he and his family were celebrating his birthday. Huo begins to drink while sitting at a nearby table. When King arrives, he adds, I don't have to fight you right now, so don't ruin my mood. His friend also convinces him that now is not the time to fight. Huo becomes enraged at his friend and declares, we are no longer friends. He challenges King, challenging him to a battle. Everyone becomes terrified and flees for their lives. As Huo and King were left behind, they engaged in a massive, furious combat. They became sworn adversaries for the rest of their lives. Huo was enraged and attacked his chest, putting an end to him. Huo returns home to discover his mother dead after he dies. His mother's body was found in bed, and he has no idea what happened to her. Then he recalls that King's associates had put an end to my family, and he was correct. He remembers his daughter and goes to meet her in her room. As he enters, he receives the biggest surprise of his life. She was found dead in her bed, with blood all around her and a pouch in her hand. She intended to present it to her father when he returned. The significant people in Huo's life have vanished, and his companions inform him that King has terminated your companion because he misbehaved with his wife. Huo believes that King has killed the man for saving his wife's life, and that he has done so without thinking. Huo felt humiliated, and he had no reason to live. He's pictured sitting in a ship's corner, thinking he'll go wherever the ship takes him. He doesn't have any purpose to live. He had been wandering the streets for six months when he decided to take his own life. People, on the other hand, save him from drowning in the river. They adopted him as a member of their tribe and look after him. He wakes up, but he's depressed and hasn't spoken to anyone. Then he is looked after by a blind lady named Moon. She used to be concerned about him and would feed him. She believes that this person will improve over time. 
Moon was cutting Huo's hair one day when he realized he had come to his senses. She cleans him by taking him outdoors to the water. Huo has been a part of their community since that day. He returns to their property to work. Huo and Moon get along well. The tribe's children steal a cow from a neighboring tribe, and Moon, together with their grandmother, apologizes to the head of the other tribe. They claim that the children will be penalized, as well as those who make mistakes. The punishment is severe, and Huo claims that he will be punished rather than the children. His reprimand was unique. Huo, the man continues, you must fight with me. They get into a brawl, and Huo is careful not to hurt anyone. He wasn't intentionally hitting the man, he was simply defending himself. When he hears his grandmother encouraging him, he attacks him. Finally, the leader concedes defeat and praises Huo. The next day, he was in the field with Moon, and the kids came up to him and said, you fight so well, and that he instructs us in martial arts. He claims he won't teach you because he understands that people who have a lot of power often lose it. He wishes to maintain the villages tranquilly. Moon visits her parents' graves one day, as if they were still alive. Huo also misses and wishes to meet his parents. He also wishes to meet them before visiting their graves. He makes preparations to visit his village and informs Moon about it, making her pleased. She promises to wait for him, and when Huo arrives at his hamlet, it has changed. The dynasty has fallen, and numerous countries have attacked China, where there were also many foreign residents. The culture in this town has also altered. Huo visits his childhood home and sees his family servant, who greets him warmly. Huo pays his respects at his father's grave. He expresses regret to his father and realizes why he lost the argument. His father understands how people may become foes when in positions of power. He didn't want to bring his family any harm as a result of him. We come across a wrestler who is inviting people to fight. He's a talented wrestler. Until today, no one has been able to vanquish him. He is confident in his win, and Huo keeps track of his progress. He seeks out his friend in order to challenge him. He expresses regret for what he did a few years ago. He also visits King's family and expresses his regret to them. Huo informs his friend that he is not the same as before and that he has learned a lot from his acts. His pal realizes he'll need money for something. Huo arrives to the race club after he offers him money without being late. His opponent was standing nearby, and the fight was about to commence. Huo, who has learned from his mistakes, believes he will fight here, although he prefers to fight with the owner. During a quarrel, no one will disparage the other. Finally, the combat began, with Huo prevailing at first. Another man was going to fall on his nails and be hurt, losing his life, but Huo saves him because his opponent fighter was a wonderful athlete. He accepts his failure and honorably congratulates him on his success. Huo was becoming increasingly well known as a result of the single bout. Later, he runs into his friend, who informs him that they have formed an athletic association, and that the Chinese pupils are being trained there. A foreign chamber is revealed, which is aware of Huo's growing popularity and does not want Huo to become well known among Chinese people. They are afraid that Huo would defeat the foreign players. They want the next match to be lost by Huo. They're looking for an opponent fighter who can beat Huo, and a man sitting nearby vows that Huo will lose this time. Mr. Mita is the man's name, and Huo is getting ready to fight. After Mr. Mita has persuaded him, Huo meets his opponent with whom he will battle. He is also a sportsman, and when the fight day arrives, three fighters stand in front of Huo, with whom he battles admirably. For a long time, the fighters in front of him were unable to resist. Later, as I previously stated, his major opponent appears in front of the camera and claims that the previous fights were unfair. We should reschedule them, but Huo argues there is no need because we can battle without it. The match begins with them selecting their preferred weapons. The conflict begins, and it is a fierce battle. They switch weapons by accident, but the opponent is unable to fight with his new weapon. You may return your weapon to me, according to Huo. They fought again, and the first round ended in a stalemate. They take a break after the first round. Huo has tea, but Mr. Mita has poison in his tea, 
So the match begins, and Huo fights, but eventually pukes blood. The opponent fighter requests that Mita call a halt to the combat for a short time since the fighter's life is in jeopardy. Nobody hears him, and Huo wants to fight because he knows his time is running out. He will battle till he dies, and just before he died, he was attacking his opponent's chest for a few seconds. He then brings his punch to a halt, having learned from his mistakes. Has the opponent realized why he has halted his attack? He knew that if Huo hit him, he would be victorious. Huo is declared the winner by the opponent. In the end, Huo is seen dying in his friend's arms. Mr. Mita, the opponent is shown saying, you haven't done well. Mr. Mita